It's been a bit of a couple days for me. I've recorded like four Father Knows Something episodes in two days. Wow. Edited. Why so many? Because we're we're all traveling. My dad's going to Australia. I'm going to Minnesota. Australia. Australia. Wait, I didn't know that. What's he doing that for? Uh, he's got a, a job there. Okay. Memorial board job. That's amazing. Really good for him. But I've been having like a minor meltdown. My face had like the craziest reaction to a lotion I've been using for literally like a year and a half randomly. And it gave me a chemical peel. So I'm just feeling really like not great today. I'm just going to preface this. So if I'm like fiery, it's probably because my face is literally burning and feels like it's melting off me. You look great though. Skin looks flawless. That's because I just took a wet paper towel and literally like fucking sanded it because it was, I literally looked like a snake. Like (laughs) my skin was flaking off. God, like it just, it's burned. It's burned. But enough about me. How are you doing? Whew. You've had a busy day at work. Yeah. Chaos all around. Yeah. So I feel like no matter what, I don't know. I don't know how to really set up this theme. It's justifiable reactions. So it's all these stories where like there was a reaction to the problem and we're determining was that justifiable or do we think it's a bit over the top? Okay. Because there's like... I can't really think of like a concrete example. Maybe my face, I had a panic attack and started crying. And I'm like, but that's kind of justifiable. But I'm like, there's some other stuff lately that I've been dealing with where I'm like, that is the, that is, that's not a justifiable reaction. Wait, your reactions or other people's? Other people's. And oh, I'm like, okay. do you have any like of your own reactions that you're like, that's not justifiable? Um, Give me a minute. Yeah, because it's kind of hard to... You know, every like reaction that we have, we're like, oh, it's justifiable because we know where it's coming from. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, <laughs> but it's hard to kind of just like sit and reflect and be like, hmm, was was that justifiable that I acted that way? No, it wasn't. You know what I mean? <laughs> My moment of chaos happened during the holidays this year, and I think I shared it a little bit. But my parents, we were all back in Minnesota. I had spent like four or five hours decorating the Christmas tree. Mm-hmm. And my mom and my dad literally just started fighting. And my dad, like, he is oftentimes rational. But when he starts pouting, he is a fucking powder. <laughs> and he was like, fine, I'll go stay at a hotel. I won't stay here, Danette. <laughs> and my mom and my dad are very... You've still, done that before. <laughs> yeah. That's my go-to. I'm, yeah. I'm going to remove myself. <laughs> but they're very... They're still friends, but because of the history, sometimes they're water and oil. They just don't mix. Mm -hmm. And they're just going at each other. And he's like, fine, I'll stay at a hotel. I got so fed up with them fighting. I took the biggest pillow off the couch and just swung it into the Christmas tree. Oh my God. Knocked it over. I thought you were going to say like either your dad or your mom, but no, the Christmas tree, that's even worse. I just, because I'm like, (laughs) that's the only thing I can like hurt. I'm like, I spent the time making this. I I put my heart and soul into the tree and I just fucking like bonked it down That's and then I went back again and I'm just beating the tree with the pillow and I go <laughs> I'm literally screaming I'm like is this fun for you <laughs> I felt like Kirk Cousins do you like that do you like that Oh my I'm just God. like, I don't like, never told me that story. It's been like eight months since that's happened and you haven't told me because I'm a little embarrassed like I understand it's unhinged that's unhinged and it, I it's so crazy where it's like I never acted like that as a child when my parents were fighting. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I act like that now yeah, you're as like, a 28 year yeah. old. You, you had to, you had to make up for it. I you're had to like, make up screw for last you time. guys. I was so good when I was a child. Like now I get my moment. I get my time to shine. <laughs> Put me in coach. That's hilarious. So I think that's one where like looking back, I'm like, no, that was not justifiable. Like yeah. that poor tree. And it, it looked beautiful before I took it out, but I only broke a couple ornaments. So whatever. Mm. And it stopped them from fighting. Any sentimental ones? Uh, no. (laughs) My mom, like, my it's mom like has, Taylor's like first grade no. ornament that he made for your mom. Like I didn't pull any of those out. My okay. mom, my mom is um a little bit of a Christmas shopaholic slash a hoarder. Okay, so my mom has over forty bins mm. of Christmas decorations. Mm-hmm. So I just grabbed the first bin I could find okay. and just didn't have any of the sentimental ones. So you no. were in the clear. That's yeah. good. She's got that in a box. Like when your house is ready, I'm gonna ship your ornaments. Yeah, but it was unhinged, and I, you know looking at some of these reactions, some of them are unhinged. Some of them 
personally, I think are justifiable, but we're going to put it to the test. We're going to chit chat about it. I know this has been a longer intro, but the challenge today is to see how many stories we can get through. Anything over five is good. I'd love to get through seven because we'll see what we can do. Okay. No guarantees, guys. I see you. Shut up. Read the stories. I see you. This one is for you. I hope you're happy. Why'd you have me on it for this one? <laughs> Could have like done anyone else. Yeah. <laughs> it's like even every single story that you just said in the intro, I was like, ooh, I have something to add to that. Ooh. And then I'm like, no, just let it go. Keep it moving. Keep so it what's moving. your, do you have a reaction? And then we'll get into it. Well, okay. So when I was little, actually, I didn't know how to like channel my anger. Like I just sometimes like my brother would make me so mad. I'd go to my room and I would just I never, ever swore in front of anybody, but I would go in my room by myself and I would swear like and say every swear word that I knew. <laughs> and but I would never do that in front of any, if anyone swore in front of me. I was like, don't do that. That's bad. And so I would just like release it all in my room. And I threw something and it was this gift that I was given from my parents gave it to me from like Mexico or something. It was this little bird that was hanging oh, yeah. and I threw something just, you know, chaotically and it hit the bird and shattered it because it was a ceramic bird. And I was so sad. And I remember just like crying and thinking like, I'm upset. And so I just ruined something that I love. Like that's, that sucks. And then what was funny is that, you know, However, like maybe like a month, maybe months later, I don't know how much longer, I got that upset again. I went into my room and I had um like, I don't know, some type of like toy, like hard thing. And I had it in my hand and I'm like, I'm not gonna ruin anything just because I'm mad. I'm gonna throw it at my bed. So I threw it at my bed and you know what it did? Brooke. Nope. It bounced off of my bed and it made a hole in my wall. <laughs> At least it was the wall and not your face. So, well, apparently, like, it's just, just don't, like, throw things is kind of what I learned from that, even when you really <laughs> want to. <laughs> um, Yeah. So that, I think that was. That was a good one. Yeah, that's my story. Solid. Yeah. Hey, we both came up with examples. That doesn't usually happen. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. Let's dive in. Wow. Let's do it. That's a long intro. That's bold of you. Okay, so this first one, it's coming from A-I-T-A-H, not the usual am I the asshole, mm -hmm. but there's, you know, the H at the end, mm -hmm. okay? My sister, 30 female, got married yesterday. I, 32 male, was so happy for her and agreed to help her out. She told me that the wedding was child-free, which I understand, so I asked my best friend if there was any way he could watch my son, and he agreed. I arrived at the wedding and found that it was not child-free. There were probably 15 children there. I was confused, but didn't want to make a scene, so I waited until my sister came over to me, and I asked her what the deal was. What she told me broke my heart, and I don't know how I can look at her the same way again. She confessed that my son, 12 male, was excluded because he has an amputated leg. She said that it would draw attention to him at the wedding. I almost lost it. I could understand if he was going to be disruptive or something, but because of that, I didn't trust myself in that moment, so I just walked out and went home. When I got home, my son asked me why I was back so early, so I made up some excuse and then spent the rest of the day having fun with him because it was the only thing keeping me sane. Since then, I've been getting dozens of messages from people saying how me leaving caused my sister to start crying and the whole wedding was ruined, but I honestly don't care right now. I'm a mess. I'm a single dad, so I don't have someone to help me right now. But these messages are actually making me wonder, am I the asshole? Oh, no, absolutely not. That's disgusting behavior. And I'm I'm glad that her wedding was ruined. And you know what? Like, he did not do anything to actively ruin that wedding. She decided to ruin that wedding. She actually could have kept going on her merry way and had a great wedding. She was affected by his really good decision of exiting the situation because he didn't trust what he was going to say and she ruined her own wedding so I there's no part in my mind that thinks that he's an asshole like that is unacceptable no question I'm what honestly, she said unacceptable, unacceptable. Yeah. 
I'm honestly really surprised he didn't do more. Like, and I'm like, I'm so proud that he didn't. But like, God, I just told you guys I took down a Christmas tree. Like, (laughs) if this were me, I would, oh, I just don't know how I would react. I think I would probably follow suit, actually. But you know how you watch movies sometimes and there's like the scene where like, everything goes to shit. Someone pushes a cake down, they throw the wine. And then all of a sudden it's like, Hey, are you listening to me? And it zones back in and yeah. none of that yeah. happened. Yeah. I like in the, that's what you envision. That's hundred percent. That's what I envision. Like, did you see the video of the guy that, um, was cut like cake cutting with his wife at their wedding and he used a sword Mm-mm. and started hacking at the cake? No. Crazy. Weird. Absolute idiot. But I like in this situation, it's like, Oh, my son isn't here because of his wait, amputated wait, 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 wait. leg. He was doing it to be funny or like, yeah. oh, okay. I'll pull up the TikTok and show okay, you. Okay, got it. Basically, these two people got married. They're cutting their cake and the guy takes the sword and starts hacking at the cake. Mm. Ruins ruins their whole cake. Interesting. And so in my Reflex. head, I'm like, oh, my son's not at your wedding because he has one less leg. Yeah. Well, guess what, bitch? You're not going to have a cake. Hack, hack, Dude, hack, hack, hack. No, <laughs> I think like I would just, I would be a little bit more meticulous because in that case, it would look like I'm fucking crazy, right? Like people mm. would just be like, why the fuck? Like they'd have videos of it. It'd be on TikTok. They'd be like, crazy lady ruins cake, you know, whatever. <laughs> oh, and so it would go viral. What I think what I would do is be like, anyone have a mic? I want to make a toast. To my lovely sister, who, and then I would just say that, has the warmest, biggest heart, which is why my son isn't here. Oh, that's right. You didn't want him here because he has an amputated leg. Yeah. Oh, oh, cancel that speech. Thank you. Everyone have a good night. Yeah. Drop mic and leave. Like, that's what I would want to do because then it's just like, you're, you're not the crazy one. You are a little bit malicious, but you're not the crazy one. Like, you... To me, I'm like, that's justified. So that's why I'm saying like this move that he made, it's actually the most mature thing he could have possibly done. He did not ruin her wedding slightly. She ruined her own wedding in every single way, like every single way. way. Yeah. Like even after she was a complete bitch and, you know, decided to, I don't have make that horrible decision. It's like he could have left and she could have just been like, all right, well, we are going to like proceed and move forward. Not think about it until tomorrow. But no, she decided to ruin her own wedding. So not the asshole, 100%. Good, yeah. Or I think we're all in agreement. Top comment on this one, not the asshole. You did not ruin the wedding. You left it when you found out your son was not invited for fear his amputated leg would take attention from the bride. I felt icky just typing that out. Yeah. What did she think would happen? Did she think you would not notice all the kids at a wedding you were told was child-free? Have you found out what fairy tale she has told as to why you left? Anyone messaging you saying you ruined the wedding, I suggest the following response. And then they like italicize it. I made a choice to leave when I learned the wedding was not child free, as I'd been told, but rather my son had been excluded for nothing more than my sister's fear his amputated leg would somehow overshadow her. Oh, that's so Had wild. I been told the truth up front, I wouldn't have been there to walk out in the first place. If anything ruined her wedding, it was her own lies, deception, and ego. Mm -hmm. If, knowing the truth, you still side with her, let me know now so that I can add you to the list of people on my no contact list. No notes. Absolutely. No notes. That is just absolutely wild. I don't know. Oh, I just, it's so frustrating to me how people, when they have a wedding, get so self-absorbed. Like, I understand it's your day and it's that, like, in there's certain situations where, like, you shouldn't try to please everybody. Like, certain, what like, stories you've told, you know? But when it comes to something so disgustingly vain, like, a child who lost a limb and you think it's going to take away from your attention, look at at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself who the fuck you are. Because that's like disgusting behavior. Also, like, granted, he's 12. I don't know how, like, fresh this is. I don't know what caused the amputation. You can have an amputation from cancer if you have bone cancer. He could have had a traumatic accident. I worked in the ER. I saw a little girl get run over by a lawnmower. She lost her lower leg. I saw like the craziest shit. You don't know what he went through. You don't know how fresh this is. But in my head, I'm like, if this isn't a fresh injury, he could be very well adapted to this by now. He could already have his prosthesis. He could be wearing pants in a nice little suit. Who's going to fucking notice? 
It doesn't matter though. It That's the thing is that it, there's like it's no. It doesn't matter no matter what the yeah. added context is here. But it's like how delusional are you? How yeah. fucking unhinged are you that you think this little twelve year old is mm-hmm. going to take away from your day? You're the bride. Yeah. Of course, everyone's going to be staring at you. It's it's just one of those things where a lot you know sometimes we read these stories and it's we don't know. There's two sides to two stories. People like skew things, but like. This is one of those stories where it doesn't matter the other details. Him Bottom not, line. Him not being allowed in the wedding and other kids being allowed in the wedding. Bottom line. Bad. That's what her nephew, that's her nephew. Yeah. Like, My brain just gets so curious. Like, I just want to know all the details. Like, yeah. I'm just such a nosy little shithead sometimes. Like, <laughs> and, and my OT brain, I go like, okay, well, you know, why would he take away? Like, I just like, I'm like, what? what's happening there from an OT perspective. I just like, I want to know. I want to I mean, even if it was- And I don't need to know. It's none of my fucking business. Yeah. I get that. But I'm just curious. It's just like, even know. if it was fresh, like I, she should be like, carry him. I don't care what you have to do. Like have him show up. I want him there. I want him included. I don't want him to feel- Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Unbelievable. There's a couple comments from OP. Not the asshole. Holy shit. What was your sister even thinking? That you suddenly wouldn't notice that 15 other children were there? Did she exclude every other person with visible dif- disabilities because they might take attention away from her precious day? What she did was just plain cruel. Yeah. And OP goes, I honestly don't know what she was thinking because I don't think I can talk to her right now. She couldn't even tell me why she didn't want him there before the wedding. That is what is making me more mad than anything. Yeah. There's a couple other comments. Um basically just being like, I felt that I needed to leave for my own safety. I've dealt with so much crap from other people about my son. I couldn't deal with it coming from my family. Unbelievable. What crap is he getting? Yeah. This poor guy. Who are these people? I had a day today where I was just like, I hate people. And I know some days I you wake up- You called an idiot by a random lady. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like you literally got harassed by a random lady calling you idiota. Like, yeah. like you had I don't, a day, well, girl. She sometimes would go back and forth saying idiot and then she would say idiota. Idiota. Uh, yeah. Idiota. Idiota. I don't, I don't know if that means something else, but, and she said something like you suck. Well, she was also homeless. So I, there's, it wasn't personal, but like I had a morning. And when she said that, <laughs> I was like, you better fucking stay the fuck away from me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, wild. But but yeah, I, I had wish. A, I had a day like that today. And like some days I like wake up and I'm like, I fucking love people. Like people are so cool and like creative and uh, like um, imaginative and amazing. And then some days I'm literally like, I fucking hate people. <laughs> yeah. So today was one of those mornings. So I might be a little feisty. It's not me all the time, but today might be a little fiery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next one. Okay. This one is titled, Am I the asshole for asking my sister what the fuck she expected to happen at her shit show of a bachelorette party? For some reason, my female 32 sister, 23, and her fiance, 25, decided that the very best way to celebrate before getting married was to have a joint bachelor slash bachelorette party. At strip clubs. They also hired a bus limo for the evening. The aftermath was, thus far, three breakups, four people dropping out of the wedding party, one impending divorce, and one arrest. The cleaning bill for the limo was more than the original rental fee. She was crying to our mom at dinner the other day, and I snorted. I tried not to. I honestly did. I was trying my best to just keep my mouth shut. She asked me what was so funny. I said that I wasn't sure what she expected to happen, getting a group of people drunk, using illicit substances, and getting horned up watching exotic dancers. She said that I was an asshole for judging her and her friends. I said I wasn't judging, just that literally anyone could have seen that outcome. My mom told me to apologize because my sister is having to replace most of her wedding party on the fly. I did, but I still think I'm right. Am I the asshole? <sighs> I mean, that's just, I don't really even know how to, how to label that because the asshole for laughing at a, at a sad situation. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say, I would say, I don't know if I'd be able to keep it in though. Right. Like it's, it's really not that, 
you can't blame OP that much, right? But it's also just, <laughs> I mean, like your sister is going through something and is really unhappy and then you laughed at it. Like, yeah, you could, you could put yourself in the asshole ca category. I honestly, I think sometimes like, <sighs> were, was this to be expected? I don't think the answer is obviously yes. I think our group of friends for my bachelorette, mm -hmm. Justin's bachelor party, I think we could easily handle this. Yeah. I think sometimes some people don't know how to handle things. Some yeah. people take this opportunity as an excuse to go off the rails, get crazy, cheat, do things. Like there are people mm -hmm. that, I mean, people ruin everything. Like <laughs> the, certain people will ruin things. Yeah. Like, you think about a wedding and a cake cutting, like I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier. You think about gender reveals. People are people. They're unpredictable and things can go south. Yeah. I think the sister kind of saying that sounds a little judgy. Yeah. I think laughing, yeah, I would have a hard time containing my laughter. I'd be like, girl, like it got crazy. Like, <laughs> I mean, we did go to a strip club and there were drugs. Like, come on. But I don't know. I feel like in that moment, then you need to be like, but hey, we're going to fix it. Like, she's clearly struggling. She's 23. She's a little yeah. younger. Trying to plan this wedding. Trying to replace her friends. Also, like, replacing your wedding party on the fly. Just cut the wedding party down. You don't need eight bridesmaids. Yeah. Cut it down. Uh, it's just... Yeah, it, that's a, it's a difficult situation because you, you look at, like, you and Justin. And you guys have always been completely okay with the idea of strip clubs. Like, it doesn't phase you. And, like, I, on the other hand, would never want to do a strip club with a significant other like maybe if it was just like totally like gimmicky and like at the end of the night and we were just like having so much fun and we're laughing about it but like it's not anything that I would ever be like actively down for because I'm just that's just how I am in a relationship like I want it to be like there's a million guys that I can be really good friends with like if I'm gonna be like dedicated to one person like I want us to be intimate with each other and like just each other kind of thing yeah so I think that it's like if you and Justin were to have a situation like this where you're like that sounds great like it would be great for you guys and then if you brought all of your like bridesmaids and then like what are they called men of honor <laughs> men of honor groomsmen <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, and then it's just like not everyone has that relationship, but everyone's trying to please you guys. Right. And so then it's like there's going to be couples that are like not as stable in that situation. For sure. And that doesn't mean that it's you and Justin's fault because like everyone could have opt opted out. Right. But at yeah. the same time, like people are trying to like, you know, like please you. They don't want to opt out. But like yeah, I wish everyone would just communicate like up front. Hey, yeah. strip clubs make me uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. We won't go. Yeah. Let's go to the casino and play blackjack and bop around. Let's, yeah. there's so many other activities. Let's go to a laser tag and take shrooms. Like, yeah. I, I don't know, whatever you want to do, whatever floats your boat, but you don't have to go to a strip club. Like, yeah. And like, I just wish people would be more upfront about their feelings. Right. And also like at 23, I mean, everybody's different, but I think for a lot of people, like a lot of people could relate to this. Like yeah. when, you, when I was 23 years old, it's like, I was still just like trying to be like cool girl, you yeah. know, like I'm fucking chill. I'm a cool girl. It's cool. And so sometimes you bend to things that like you realize as you get older, like, no, I actually know what I like and what I dislike and what I'm cool with and what I'm not like, th at least that's how it happened for me. I know everyone's different, but like this, this girl at 23 years old, she might have just been like, I'm so chill. Like, we're all just going to have a good time. Like, it's, you know, it's fun. It's gimmicky. Like, it's just, yeah. it's like people do this on their bachelor, bachelorette parties. And so I do, that's why I'm like, yeah, to have someone laugh in your face. It's like, yeah, it was an asshole move, but it doesn't mean that like you're an asshole. Yeah. Especially your older sister yeah. that's nine years older than you. Yeah. Who you probably really look up to. Right. You're trying to work on that relationship because for me personally, there's eight years between me and my older brother mm -hmm. and our relationship was super strained. We yeah. were not on similar playing fields. Mm -hmm. He was in high school. I was in elementary school. Like it was a really hard relationship until I got into college and then I really wanted to work on that. Yeah. So it would be really hurtful to yeah. deal with this. Do we want to know a little tea about what happened? Yeah. What do you think the overall vote is, though, first? That's a good question. Um, 
I don't know, actually. I could see it totally going either way. So it's posted one day ago, uh-huh. so it hasn't populated yet. But I'm seeing a lot of you're the asshole. Okay. Which That's I, what, I could see. Yeah. Um, the top comment right now is info. Is there anything other than the overall party plan that made it likely to be a mess? Did they buy a bunch of Coke and order sex workers too? Because there's no actual reason a group of adults can't go to a strip club, get tipsy, have a nice time, and not descend into chaos. And OP goes, uh, no sex workers. Let's leave it at that. Doesn't want to get her IP tracked. <laughs> okay. That person, I think, read a lot of OP's comments and edited to add, you're the asshole. There's a lot of people just being like, Strip clubs are literally one of the few industries that explicitly hires sex workers. Are you saying you went to a strip club that had no strippers? Because they are quite literally sex workers. And OP responds and goes, no prostitutes. Got it. Yeah. And clarifies. I have, to be honest, never seen more comments from an OP Hmm. than this post. So if I scroll, this is the bottom. That makes it feel like very real. Scroll. And I didn't even load them all. Yeah. So OP does finally get into it. Someone goes, so there was Coke, but no strippers at the strip club, huh? And they go, LOL, there were no mm-hmm. prostitutes. Right. They use that word. Um, someone goes, you're the asshole. That sounds like a party that so many people could have had a good time at and not ruin anything. Blaming the party and not the people makes you sound like a prude. No yeah, offense. I mean. Mm. Sucks that your sister is dealing with that before a wedding. Maybe like support her unless there's something missing here. And that makes you not the asshole. I was at the party. I went to celebrate with my sister. I managed to not get fucked up and wreck my relationship. Yeah, she's like really judgmental. It's just like... It's interesting. Someone goes... Sounds like she's almost like jealous of her sister by the way that she's living. I don't know about the way that she's just like looking down on her. You know, like... it's. It does seem like I'm 32. I'm so mature strip club joint bachelorette party which is what i want to do i don't i want to do like a like a joint thing yeah i think we I each think have it would one be really night fun. yeah well i think we have one night where we like go our separate ways and then mm-hmm. like meet up but like i think like i don't know i think it'd be a good weekend but yeah uh someone goes suggest that your sister give the attendees a free std test as their parting gift op responds funny story in college a lot of this group got an sti because they were all having sex with each other in unconventional groups and couples. My brother called them, quote, the burning ring of fire. Hmm. People are just pounding her, like asking, what's the tea? What's the tea? The first comment I see spelling details is fine. The maid of honor and her boyfriend did not break up. The other bridesmaid, who is married, was in an Eiffel Tower with two of the groomsmen. One groomsman has dropped out along with the bridesmaid. Her husband has left her because I guess this isn't the first time. The other groomsman in that group has no fucks to give and will be attending. We are lucky that by the time the cops showed up, everything illegal had been taken, eaten, ingested, or swallowed. I stayed mostly sober and stayed with my sister all night so she could party and not do anything stupid. My husband also attended, and I had tasked him with keeping an eye on the groom. He decided the best way to keep the groom out of trouble was to get his pants shitting drunk which he accomplished with the only casualty being some underwear, a sock, and a pair of Levi's. I don't know what that means. The bus slash limo came out as the worst victim in this whole debacle. It needs a biohazard cleanup. Oh my God. And maybe some upholstery replaced. Wow. My dad is pissed. Wow. After reading the comments, I went to see my sister this morning and gave a more sincere apology. She asked me to be the matron of honor and I accepted. If anyone here is free Saturday, okay, that's good. <laughs> if anyone here is free Saturday, we will still need someone to Where sing. Where does she live? The rose during the ceremony, since my cousin is currently persona non grata. I only know about the breakups from hearsay, but suffice it is to say that getting a group of friends who have a lot of sexual history together yeah. and giving it's them drugs idea. and yeah. alcohol, then taking them out to see naked people yeah. is a terrific idea. If you are not getting married in a week, yeah. I think, and you know what? I also think that this is actually a favor that she did for a lot of these people because now it just shows like- You're if not you, with the right person. Yeah, you're not with the right fucking person. People can start like moving on, living their own life. And I, I decided I want to take this, not back, but like, because I already said what I said and I meant it. But like, I think that 
Okay. Laughing. You know what? That happens. When you told me that a girl got Eiffel Towered, I started giggling a little bit too. Okay. It's a natural <laughs> reaction sometimes. And like, I don't think that's what made her like the asshole. I think the fact that she doubled down, like if her sister to be like, wait, why are you laughing? And then she's like, well, this is your fault. Instead, she could have been like, I'm sorry. Like, I didn't mean to laugh. Like, you know, this is, this is not fun for you. I'm, I know this is hard. Like it, uh, obviously like you, you could handle this type of scenario, yeah. but a lot of your friends couldn't. And that's a hard lesson learned. Like, let me know how I can help you. Yeah. Like initially laughing is just like, sometimes it's like a knee jerk reaction. So I'm glad she came back around and apologized. Sounds like everything worked realized, out. Realized, realized. Um, there are a lot of people asking what an Eiffel Tower is. Honestly, a shocking amount, mm -hmm. like multiple for those Sh of you. So us three interacting. No. Yeah, no, hell no. <laughs> poor, my poor intern Lucy over here. Hell no. <laughs> I, I feel like with clothes on, you cannot do that for a Lauren. <laughs> I mean, it's like the same thing as like cheerleading, like doing the same shit. Okay. So for those that don't know, an Eiffel Tower usually involves three people. Mm -hmm. There's a middle person. Mm -hmm. Think of it, someone in the middle. There's someone pounding them from behind doggy style. And then they're usually sucking a dick or licking a clit or something along so those lines. So I think it's supposed to be standing up though, right? Like it's supposed to be standing on it's the ground. Usually, it's usually in the context of either three guys or two guys and a girl. Okay, And yeah. so it's like the girl is on all fours or whoever the middle person She's is. She's like the stilt in the middle of the Eiffel Tower. All fours. Blowjob on the mouth end, <laughs> doggy on the rear. The two are, are high-fiving high -fiving at yeah, the top. Yeah, that's the last thing. I, yeah. at a very... Like, I think I was like, mm, like 19 years old. Somebody said Eiffel Tower and I went to look it up on, um, what's that site called? Pornhub? No, Jesus. Urban Dictionary? What? Yes, Urban Dictionary. Yeah. And I just remember reading it like graphically and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Urban Dictionary is scary. I remember there was a rumor that went around about me from one of my um, ex-boyfriends after we broke up. And one of my guy friends told me about it like years later. And he's like, he's like, did you ever hear about that rumor? Like about you and the pink sock? <laughs> what? And I'm like, what the <gasps> fuck is that? And he goes, well, it's where you do anal and you have a prolapsed, pro like prolapsed colon. Oh. You get flipped inside out. Oh, I've heard of that one too. Pink sock. Yeah. Because if you pull a sock off, sometimes oh it flips out. Oh, and no. And I was like, that never fucking happened. Oh, no. And then I heard this story. It was like, yeah, you were having sex. Your mom was downstairs. I go, you know my mom. Yeah, that would never happen. That would never <laughs> happen. Do you think I would have sex with my mother in the house? Yeah. And he goes, I knew it was a lie. And I'm like, yeah. People are so brutal in high school. They're so And mean. college. It's and so in life. Mean. Do you <laughs> remember kidding. that app, Yik Yak? Uh, no, I think that like I was like a like a year off or something because I was I in college. We were in college at the same time. I don't know. I just I remember maybe my roommate was on there and it was like the meanest shit. You know, I had a flip phone for like a really long time. And then I also like I did too my whole once, freshman year. Then once I got an actual like no. By the, by the way, this is not like aging myself out. Like everybody had iPhones. I just had a flip phone. Like, <laughs> I, And then. And then um, once I finally got an iPhone, I lost it. And mm. then, you know, I had a boyfriend who had an iPhone and then like, I just was like, whatever. So people would contact me through him. Yeah, you um, lost it at WeFest, huh? So, uh, yeah. But actually, <laughs> I got it back that time. I lost it again after that. Uh -huh. um, but... <laughs> Yeah, so I uh, I think I missed out on the Yik Yak stuff. It was mean. Because it was essentially like an anonymous platform where you could like go on and like say the meanest shit about people. And it typically you joined like a college. So you joined yeah. your school and people would upvote these things. Like it would be like, Lauren Ralph is the biggest whore. I watched her do coke off someone's dick. And then people would upvote it. I didn't even know what coke was in college. Like, I swear I'm, I'm honest, to you. I, I never encountered it there. I could not believe that people did cocaine in college. Like, when I graduated, I talked to some people, like, that I was friends with in fraternities. And they were just like, yeah, no, we did that all the time. I had I no idea. No. Like, I know it's, like, pretty prevalent now. But, like, I used to think, or, like, 
you know, people, whatever. Yeah. I used to think that like cocaine was meth. Like, like up until I don't coming to LA. Yeah. When I even, even so when I was in LA for at least yeah. like three years Coke into LA, so I like Ugh. was so sheltered from it. So, yeah. and now I'm like, wow, like it's at every like party. Somebody has it. It's so it's, crazy. It's really crazy too, that it is so prevalent because like it's literally made with gasoline. Like the yeah. chemicals and shit that go into making a lot of the drugs out there. Don't touch on me. Is guys. That, that why that song is da 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 gasolina, da 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 gasolina. Do you know what I'm talking about? I thought it was the only way I recognize that song is from uh, Fast and the Furious. I haven't watched any of those actually. Yeah, it's a car racing. No, I know. I, I know that. Yeah. Yeah. But. So that's how I recognize that song. And then if you do the tour at Universal Studios, you like see the cars dance behind the scenes okay. to the, it. So then if it's at Universal Studios, then it's probably not referring to cocaine with gasolina. Right? Honestly, I think a lot of drug innuendos and sexual innuendos go over people's heads. Mm. So who knows? There is one more comment I'll read from this one. They did share another example. I'll give one of the tamer examples. My cousin is a talented singer. She is single and was supposed to sing a song during the ceremony. This is why they need a replacement to sing The Rose. Mm. However, she hooked up with the maid of honor, whom nobody knew had that in her, including her boyfriend. This happened in the bus. He got arrested for trying to break into the bus while this was going on, and several people were cheering them on after locking him out. Oh my God. We need like a series, Netflix series on this shindig. This is out of control. This feels like Project X. Yeah, but like <laughs> more crazy. Like sex edition. Oh my God. Wild. Did I, did I ever tell you how, oh dude, I like knew this guy for so long that I was dating and then dated him and we shared Netflix. And then all of a sudden I see like, whatever, a, like a year ago or so, I see on my Netflix recently watched Project X and It. And I was like, what is wrong with him? Like, what is, cause I'm like, I know this person. Like, this is not stuff you watch. Like, are you okay? He's going through something. And then I found out that I logged into like, like hotels or like Airbnbs and my stuff was still playing there. So people no. were still using my stuff. <laughs> but like for like at least like a month, I was like, my ex lost it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god how did you find out did you ask them oh uh, no because um oh i think oh because they changed my name they made a profile on my account and they said bob and they had like a really scary like i can't remember it might as well have been it like it was a really scary like icon for yeah. it and like the name was bob and so then he actually hit me up and he's like really he's like you're giving other dudes access to like your netflix <laughs> and i was like Dude, what? I was like, I thought that was you being weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Oh, Ooh. man. Anyway. <laughs> okay, moving along. Moving along. Do we want to like have a more tame, relatable kind of relationship debacle? Or do we want food related fiance trouble? I think the first one, right? I don't know. Food related stuff, just like, it's just kind of like, mm. I'm going to prove you wrong. Really? Yeah. Okay. So we're doing the food. God, it's like one of those things where it's like you I, ask them A or B and they say A and then they're like, B. okay, so B. Yeah. Well, it's one of those things where it's like um, <laughs> you ask your girlfriend what they want for dinner and it's like, oh, do you want to go get like sushi? And she's like, no, I know. I want pizza. And it's like, you know, when yeah. you're, everyone's yeah. like being indecisive, it's mm -hmm. like, what do you want for dinner? I don't know. You choose. They just needed okay, like sushi. Yeah. They needed you to say something to know for sure that their heart lied with the other yeah. story. Yeah. All right. Go for it. I heard a trick about that, though. Okay. If you have a partner that's really indecisive, mm. you always say, guess where we're going to eat tonight. It's going to be really good. And then you would be like. Uh, see, I'm indecisive, too. I'd be like, I don't know. Tell me. Fuck. Yeah. And then I'd say, Bakery. <laughs> If anyone is ever in LA, go to Bakery. It's amazing food. Bakery. Oh, we are obsessed with Bakery. Well, Bakery. it's actually Bakery. It's Bakari. No. Oh, oh, it's, oh, oh, you're it's right. It's spelled Bakari. B A C A R I. Bakari. B 
but it's pronounced Bakari. No, you're so right. I spent so much time correcting people because I talked to like a waitress in depth. Yeah. And so then finally, when someone says it correct, I was like, I got to do the opposite. Yeah. The servers have it on their shirt. Yeah. Yeah. So let's do this food one because I'm going to prove you wrong. Okay. So this is titled, am I the asshole for taking my fiance's dinner after he touched mine? I'll be quick. My female 26 fiance male 32 is blind. We don't disagree a lot, except he always gets bothered whenever I eat different food from what he's eating when we go out to eat. Like if we're having dinner out and I order something else, he'd instantly get upset and accuse me of treating him as less than when I just have different tastes in food. I just eat what he eats to keep the peace. I eat out alone as an alternative. But since he clearly doesn't trust me, he'd randomly touch my plate to see if I'm actually having the same dish. This has caused huge arguments between us, and I told him to stop doing it, and he said he would. We went out to eat two nights ago, and I ordered the same dish that he ordered. When the food arrived, he looked somewhat uncomfortable. I asked what was wrong, and he refused to say. And before I could even grab the fork, he extended his arm and his hand and touched the food on my plate. He moved quickly and started excusing what he did, saying he quote, just wanted to make sure. But I lost it on him. I felt so grossed out and there was no way I could eat the food after he touched it. He tried to get me to drop it saying I shouldn't be grossed out by his hand and that I overreacted, etc. But I grabbed his plate and told him that I was taking it as my dinner. He at first asked me to be rational and give the plate back, but I refused. An argument ensued and we had a fight. He then ended up leaving started spam texting me, accusing me of being bitter, pathetic, and childish, and robbing his dinner. He went to stay with his friend, who picked him up, and his friend sided with him, saying I was in the wrong. Even went as far as to say that I was abusing my fiancé and financially controlling him when I pointed out that I was the one who paid for the food. Huh. The problem is magnified now with him wanting an apology and me refusing to give him one. My parents think I should have more patience and that this is just typical love spats between us, but I'm not sure. Was I the asshole with how I handled this? Wait, so I'm sorry. Why why does he want to make sure she has the same food as him? There is no mention of it in the post. There is an edit shortly after that says, I want to point out that this is not the case when we eat at home. He has no issue with me eating different food at home, but in public, it's a different story. In the original post, there's no mention as to why. I don't see there's too many things missing. I don't understand this because why why does anyone need to eat the same thing as somebody else? I'm wondering if it's just because he's blind and maybe he's self-conscious about like eating something that might be like more difficult. Like, like I don't want to imply that because he's blind, he can't handle certain dishes. But I wonder if just from his perspective, maybe he feels a little more self-conscious and in order to make things easier, he requests that she orders the exact same dish as him. I don't know. But, I have but no idea. But there wasn't any like mention of that. Like, no, there's no mention as to why. That, this, see, I feel like there's too many holes missing. Like this one, I'm just like, I'm I'm really confused on that. Like, but like based off of what you just gave me, I mean, I think so like, every, like people have their things, right? Like I, um, my boyfriend took the lid off of this like couscous salad that we had from Mendo and it had a bunch of like the sauce or flavor on the lid and he like licked the lid and then put it back on. <laughs> And I was like, <laughs> that's gross. So gross out. And it's like, it doesn't matter that I kiss that person. Like I just, it just weirds me out. Like it makes the food like undesirable to me. And like, I can't help that I feel that way. So I'm just, I'm just like annoyed because I'm like, I'm like, that's, that's yours now. I don't want that anymore. It's cool. Like I'll just move forward. But like, I think that if this is something that OP's partner does often, like puts their entire hand on a meal it's like yeah like if op feels grossed out by it like that's 
okay. That's like, it's gross. Like, where have your hands been? Yeah, like our, our hands are so dirty. Did like, you touch a bunch of doors and then have you washed your hands since? I don't know if you went to the bathroom and grabbed your dick and then didn't wash after because a lot of guys don't wash after. They think, oh, I just touched my dick. I didn't touch anything. And they and, don't wash their hands. And it's like a, and it's a weird thing, right? Because OP probably touches his dick. So if he touches his dick, touches the food, like, it, you know, so it's like, it's like, it doesn't, it's one of those things where like, I don't think that there needs to be an explanation for what makes you feel unappetized towards your food. It's your food. It's your food. You feel unappetized. That's your story. And if like, and that's why I'm like, it feels like there's a bunch of things missing, maybe. Like, I'm really confused by this. But based off of this information I'm given, I don't understand why. The touching? Why, like, yeah. Like, why OP's partner would not understand that she doesn't like that. Well, and he has been asked to stop. Right. Said he would. Right. And then still is checking. Right. There are only two comments that OP responds to, one of which I can't even see because the comment was removed by a moderator. But the response from OP is, I don't know what his issue is, but he has said something about equality, which I guess is nonsense to me because I don't get this argument. The other comment is info. Has he ever been evaluated for OCD? No, but he's been known for having trust issues due to former relationships. I, I'm, I don't, I don't know. I'm getting a lot of like bad vibes from this one. One, the controlling aspect. You need to order exactly what I order. Mm -hmm. Two, the touching the food. Three, the insane reaction from him when she's like, well, you just put your hands all over my food. We have the same dish. We're switching. It's your food. You touched it. You eat it. I think her reaction in this was totally justifiable. Wait, wait. So he so he didn't want to eat the food that he touched? Yeah. That's what this whole fight is over. I figured that he touched his food and then her food. No, he only touched her food. Okay. And then when she went to switch them, he was like, how dare you? That Act rational. Act rational. Switch them back. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that's... Bitch, you eat the food you touch. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm like totally that on is her a, that side. That is some like very, very controlling um, tendencies. The overall vote on this one is not the asshole. Top comment, not the asshole. List of red flags. Him insisting you eat the same food as him. Him feeling he has the right to check to make sure. Him putting his hands on your food. Him continuing to touch your food after saying he would stop. Mm -hmm. There's something going on there and you shouldn't ignore it. Yeah. Um, next comment. I agree with all of this. I would also add his enlisting his friend on his side. His friend's idea of support is ridiculous. Financially controlling him because she points out she paid for the meal. What a drama queen. Yeah. I think this relationship sounds like it has run its course. There is a fundamental lack of respect and denial of autonomy. And it's all coming from her boyfriend. Yeah. I would have a really hard time. And you see it a lot in like date scenarios on like movies and stuff but like when you go to eat and you're looking at the menu and you haven't decided or like one of the people in this scenarios on the movies and typically the male if it's a het couple will go she'll have the salmon and she's like I didn't want the salmon mm -hmm. like God, I forget somebody just told me that a guy did that to her who told chill. me that? Our friend oh, Chill. Chill, yeah. She was chill. like... Chill went chill. out on a date. You guys, just so you know, Chill is like... She is the most independent woman of all time. She like, is a fucking tornado, she, but it, we love her. And it, well, no, when it comes to food, like she knows exactly what she wants. She is she's, not indecisive. She no. knows exactly what she's going to order. She knows what wine she's going to have. She's she going to have a glass of Chardonnay. Where she's going to order from. She knows how tender she wants it to be. She knows everything. So it was just so funny because apparently like she went on a date with somebody who um, like tried to order for her and she was like, I don't even like that. What? <laughs> she and she like, didn't even like the phone. Yeah. And she didn't even like what he was ordering. She's like, I don't even eat that. Yeah. And I just, I thought that was so funny because it's like in general, like it's, really strange to me thinking about it. And it was about, a first date too. Yeah. It was so like presumptuous and rude. And I think that like, I'm sure, 
honestly, like the guy probably was getting hyped up and was just yeah. like, like, you know what? You got to be really confident. A woman yeah. wants to know that you're going to take care of her and that you're going to be like, you know what I mean? Like he probably was like, yeah, I'm going to do this. And like, woo. And like, you could totally yeah. see him in the mirror before the date, just yeah, hyping himself yeah. up. Like she'll you have got the salmon this. and all the salmon the and he's practicing. Yeah. She'll have the salmon. No, that wasn't right. Yeah. She'll have <laughs> yeah. the salmon. Yeah. <laughs> like you could just see him practicing in the mirror yeah. before the date. So it's like, I, I'm not even like. Uh, um, it's 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 <laughs> cute it's cute but it's just so funny because out of all people that could have like had that scenario happen to it's like so funny that it was her because the wrong girl she knows exactly what she wants yeah the wrong Boom. girly <laughs> i will also say um the one thing and i don't see it mentioned in any of the top upper comments um there is just one that has 7k upvotes he's okay with her eating a meal he touches but he won't eat the meal he touches yeah that's weird something's wrong here yeah and i don't know i'm just gonna read it i don't know how to feel about it yet i'm seeing it for the first time but someone goes in the next comment weaponized disability hmm i've never heard that term before well and we hear a lot of weaponized incompetence all the time Mm -hmm. that is the first time i've come across that someone goes down under it no, just controlling. Next comment down, it's both. Hmm. And someone after that goes, for me, it doesn't make enough sense to be either. What the fuck? So someone someone after that points out something interesting, though. Did he put something in her food he didn't want to eat? I think you're right. It's toxic and controlling. Hmm. But the abuse combined with the strange nature of it makes me question if there is more. Yeah. Like maybe he's roofing her. I don't like no. Who knows? No, I don't I it's probably if I if anything I would guess it's more closer to like an OCD thing and insecurity thing than it is a roofie thing. I I can't imagine that. Um I don't know, dude. But like maybe he just uh, was so insecure and then it's like like the obsessive nature of him was just like no like you need to accept that I touched your food and I'm not going to eat my own food that I you know whatever and that you just switched the plates on me and and you were just messing with me like I feel like it's more of like a deep-rooted insecurity thing than it is like I don't think he it doesn't sound like a roofy situation I don't know but the one thing I do want to point out is like her parents kind of being like oh it's just a love spat I mean, it, it it could be if that was like one time, but I think that the yeah. the issue is the that like yeah, that it's been a, a continuous conversation of like, yeah. hey, like don't touch my food, and then not respecting those wishes, like that's where it becomes not just like a simple little love spat. It's yeah. like okay, it's an actual problem, and like, are we going to be compatible? Because if you, it's different when like people like make mistakes, they do stupid things all the time. That's what relationships are. You got to like get to the point where like when it's a pattern. That's when you really got to like check yourself, check your partner and think like, okay, can we work through this or are we not compatible? Like mistakes happen. We say stupid things. We get in fights. But like if it's a constant like pattern, that's when you have to really like reflect on it. Yeah. Moving along. Moving along. (laughs) How many stories? Was that three? Four. Three. We got to we got to start. We got to start hauling ass. All right. I know how much you love periods. So. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. <laughs> don't you remember the original story we had about the period kitchen bowl? Yeah, I mean, I don't want like blood of any sort in like in my kitchen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is, am I the asshole? Sorry. You know the blood that's in the turkey packs or the chicken, the meat packs? Mm-hmm. Apparently that's not blood. Wait, what? I don't even know what you're talking about. So you know how if you get a pack of like ground chicken or ground turkey and you see like the pink bloody looking water? Oh, I've, it's not blood. I knew that ever since my first date was. <laughs> <laughs> I just learned this last week. I've always been so grossed out by it, but apparently it's just like a protein. Yeah. But no, it, it's funny because I was looking at these comments of someone who saw a video cooks steak a lot. Yeah. And I always thought that too. And a lot of people were like, love this video besides the fact that it's so bloody and disgusting. And everybody was talking about it. And it's just like, no, I, I don't even know the correct word. It's like, no, it was curated to like, it's only proteins. I don't even remember how? what it was. How do you get all the blood out of I don't of the know. Meat? Apparently they, I mean, how? How, how do you get to the moon? Fuck if I know. <laughs> okay, so this next one. Am I the asshole for pointing out a period stain 
to my coworker. So first of all, I'm a guy and my coworker is a girl and she's about a decade older than me and we don't know each other very well. Tonight, about an hour before closing, we were sweeping up together and I noticed that she had a blood stain on her pants from her period. So I pulled her aside and I whispered, I just wanted to let you know, I think you may have gotten your period. I have a jacket if you need it. And she kind of pursed her lips at me and said, okay, and then stormed away. Now I just got home and I'm wiped and my boss texted me that I need to call him tomorrow to talk about the situation and that I said something very inappropriate to my coworker. What? I texted back saying I was genuinely trying to help her out if she didn't know about the stain. But he said, quote, she interpreted it differently and told a different story. But that we'd talk about it tomorrow because he wanted to go to sleep. Now I'm freaking out. I wasn't trying to shame her or anything about it. And I don't think, I hope, it didn't come off like that. Am I the asshole? That is so dumb. I mean, I like, okay, I will say first and foremost that I don't know why, but when people call me out for things, it bothers me. Like not when it's, I don't even know how to explain it. Like when it's a boyfriend, like a boyfriend. me saying hippopotamus. Sure. Yeah. Should but we, that's. I figured that would be the example you no, would use. No, I wasn't going to. Okay. But you, you can say that later. But like, no, I'm saying like, let's say I have dry skin right here. And then I can just see that like my boyfriend will be looking at. And I'm not, I'm talking about any boyfriend, any like, you know, whatever. Yeah. Like looking at this dry skin and like, hey, 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 there's, there's uh dry skin right there. Hey, hey. And I'm like trying to tell a story. And I'm like, you know what? I don't care that there's dry skin right there. <laughs> We're it's just the two of us hanging out watching a movie. I don't care. <laughs> it's bothering you more than it's bothering me. Like, I didn't know about it. Like I'm just like chill out. <laughs> so it's like I have like these moments where I'm just like leave me alone. But like if I'm in a public setting and I just got my period in like a white skirt, oh yeah, or something, and like somebody pulled me aside and like that, that's brave. And they like they probably didn't want to do that. They probably weren't just like ooh like I'm totally gonna you know, like, this is going to be really fun for me. Like, no, if they don't know each other that well, it's like, they're trying to look out for you. It's awkward. Yeah. And that's awkward for them. And they're trying to look out for you. And so it's just like, if someone were to do that, I would be like, I'm really embarrassed, but it's not your fault. All you're trying to do is help me. But yet I feel like sometimes people like look at them as a scapegoat and then like, fuck you, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I, this one's super weird. I'm also annoyed that the boss like texted him and was like, we need to talk tomorrow. But I won't but I'm tell you. To bed. Yeah. Like, oh my God, let's instill some severe anxiety so he can't sleep all night. And then tomorrow he's going to be a fucking mess. And then I'm going to go for him. Like what? <laughs> you already know you want to talk tomorrow. Just text talk him in the tomorrow. morning. Talk tomorrow. Yeah. Let him go to bed. I let him sleep. And people do that all the time. Like even like, um, like in relationships, someone will be upset with the other mm -hmm. person. It's like, hey, you know, I'm not like really happy right now. We should talk tomorrow. <laughs> I got so called out for that by my roommate, Sarah. What? Because <laughs> I was just like, hey, can we talk when you get home? And she's like, no, we're going to talk right now. She's like, you can't just do this to me. And I was like, <laughs> okay, that's fair. She's like, you're going to ruin the rest of my day. Now I'm just going to be wondering what you want to talk about. So she's like calling me. And I was like, ah. <laughs> It's anxiety provoking. But I was like, the only reason I, I like I explained this to her, the only reason I was like, can we talk when you get home is because I was like, right when she gets home, I'm gonna be like, you know what? She's so cool. I don't need to talk about it. I won't hold myself accountable to be like, hey, I would really like if you put your spoons in the dishes. I don't know what it was. You know what I mean? Something stupid. Minor. Like, but it's just like, I'm gonna chicken out and be like, you know what? I'm not going to speak up for Never something mind. that I think would be cool if she did. I'm just going to, you know, like, it's fine. She's awesome. Let's watch a movie together. So I held myself accountable by being like, can we talk when you get home? Because I was like, that way she's going to be like, oh, you wanted to talk? I'm like, yeah, could you, you know, put your spoons away? Like, whatever it was. Yeah. And so it wasn't to be like anxiety provoking. But when she said that, I was like, oh, my God, she's so right. Like, that is just like it happens all the time. Yeah. And I think for everyone out there. Do not send messages like that yes. unless you are ready to hold that conversation right then and there. Yeah, true. Because it's not fair. It's disrupting like the entire day. Yeah. Like, or, oh, you are so bad about this. 
<laughs> if you're having a conversation with someone trying to resolve something, which, okay, granted, we shouldn't do it over text messages, mm -hmm. but like I'll certainly, I'll be waiting days and I'm like, this bitch hasn't responded to me. For days? Days. And a conflict resolution? Days. You've and done I'm, that to me before too. <laughs> when? What do you mean? When? You're notorious. <laughs> no, I'm not. That's not true. I actually, you know what's so weird is that, so my- You're the terrible texter. Okay, I'm not the best, but like, you know, what's weird is that like, I actually have this thing where when I'm texting, when s it's it's not on purpose, like people, like it sounds like it's just like to get back or like be like, oh, you didn't respond to me for a day. Now I'm not going to respond to you for a day. It's actually never like yeah, that. Yeah, it's not malicious. Like, it's literally like, oh, okay. They didn't respond to me for a day. So I have time to sit on this, to think about this. Oh. Like, I don't have to like be like rushed into it. I can like, you know, this is, they kind of set the standard. And so it's okay if I take a day to like mull it over and then respond. And you're, so like, you're the one that set the standard for me though. And then I'm sitting over there and I'm like, <laughs> she didn't respond to me. I don't know. Are we going to be friends again? I don't know. She hates me. She must hate me. No. And my brain goes down the darkest little tunnel. I, I, my brain does that too. I didn't know that your brain did that towards me. So this is, we're so literally bad. making breakthroughs right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think this is back to the story. <laughs> Because we got to we got to cruise. Um, I think this is very inappropriate. This is not yeah. a justifiable reaction. I don't know why she's so upset. Maybe because she thought her coworker was like checking out her ass. I mean, modern day, it's like you can't dress code kids anymore. Like, oh, yeah. My my boyfriend's brother is a high school teacher. And he said that they're not allowed to dress code kids. And he's like, not that I would, but like, it is kind of strange having like these girls come in with just like complete, not even just crop tops, but like literally Bras. bra tops and then short yeah. shorts because they're in California. And it's like their entire like they're just they might as well be wearing swimsuits. And he's like, yeah. it's not like he's like, it's it's not like even if I were allowed to dress code, I wouldn't. But at the same time, it's just, it's just weird. And and he even mentioned that like, if people were to dress code, then it's like, a, could be a sexual assault claim. And so, God, yeah, I don't really know because I also felt like it was really weird when people would dress code me when I was a kid and I was wearing sweatpants and it said pink on the butt. Yeah, it's happened to me too. Yeah, and so like, I thought that was really, it made me feel really gross that like an old man came up to me and was just like, you need to go to the principal's office because you have pink on your butt. Well, like, it's like, oh, so you're looking. Yeah, like it felt weird. So like, but like at the bare minimum, like I have wondered like lately especially like seeing like 15 year olds on tiktok mm -hmm. get ready for me for, with high school like or even some of the prom dresses i'm like wow okay that's like that is very it's not what we're used to growing up it's that's not for what sure we're used to. <laughs> so i was wondering i'm like damn like do they how are you how are you wearing that in high school like they banned yeah. they banned like leggings leggings when we were yeah like you couldn't wear leggings yeah and it's you couldn't like, wear yoga pants. No. They and banned yoga pants. And so I'm just like, I, I've been like wondering, and even objectively, like when you have to look at someone, I, I don't know, like don't, doesn't your eyes like kind of take in the whole person? Like, it's not like you're checking them out, but like when you glance at someone, like I'm looking at Lucy over here and it's like, I see the sweatshirt. I see that she's got shorts on today. Like I, you see like the whole person. Mm -hmm. It's not like you're have a zoom lens and you just yeah. zoom into their face. But yeah, so I think um, maybe that's where she was coming from. I personally think that she probably was just embarrassed. I mean, if you see a blood stain on the back of somebody, I don't think you're sexually harassing them by checking them out. I think it's just, yeah, sh stands out, right? It just, it happens and yeah. shit happens. The top comment is, if it went down the way you just told us, not the asshole. Maybe next time, instead of saying, I think she may be on her period, just say, you have a stain on your pants. I think you sat on something. Less embarrassing. I mean, sure. But at that point, it's just kind of like, I mean, come on. Yeah. We're all adults. It's like, let it go. We like, had um, we had a friend that had like a wardrobe malfunction. It's not like he was going around telling everybody. That'd be a different no, story. It was like, very if he's just like, If he's like, oh my God, she's on her period. That's different. But like, if he's just like, I think you might be on your period. It's just like, cool like yeah. so he has to like 
monitor himself and say something he doesn't actually think. Hey, I think you s- sat on ketchup. Like, you know what I mean? Well, it's just, we're all adults. Why do we have to play this game? Yeah. And it's like, yeah, it might he be embarrassing. Right. It might be embarrassing. Whatever. All he was trying to do was help. So it's just like, yeah. come on. Okay. Moving along. Moving along. Um, speaking of schooling and kids being crazy in school, this next one is titled, Am I the Asshole for Making My Sister Cry Since I Quizzed Her on Her Knowledge Because She Wants to Homeschool Her Kid? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get it out of the way and say I don't like homeschooling. I think it is almost impossible to do correctly on social and educational development. This is coming from someone that went to a shitty public school. So my sister was talking about homeschooling her kid. She said her and her husband will teach her. My sister and her husband are not the brightest people, much more physically labor people than understanding math. I tried to ask if that was a good idea, but she basically said, how hard could it be? So I started quizzing her, and these were not hard questions. For example, I asked what a verb was, name the planets, and a simple math problem. I literally asked her to do division. She could only name a few of the planets, and she just gave the definition for an adjective, not a verb. Also, just completely wrong with the math. It was kind of sad. I told her the right answer and asked if she can't do it, how will she teach the kid to read or do any math? She called me a jerk and left to cry. Her husband is on my ass, but my mom thinks it was a blessing. Am I the asshole? I'm questioning myself. Okay, so here's the thing. First of all, if you're not in grade school, there's a good chance that you don't know all of those answers. I don't know the planets. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're an idiot. Like, those are not things that we deal with day to day unless you are an astronaut or unless you are a math major, whatever it is. So it's like... I think that the idea, (laughs) no, the idea of homeschooling, it's like you have all of the answers right in front of you. Like these things are actually not like impossible to understand. It's about like teaching your kid to figure it out. And then you have the answer key in front of you and then you can help them along the way. Right. Like, so I don't think that it's impossible for, you know, that person to homeschool. And that that was a quiz to rule her out of homeschooling. However, my opinion on homeschooling in general is that I think it's sh- I think that it's better to not homeschool unless it's you know necessary. Like unless there are situations where it's like it's very necessary. But I do think being put out into a bunch of different different personalities and learning how to interact with humans of all different types of personalities, different upbringings at a very young age. I do think that's a really good skill. Yeah. So that's that's my personal opinion. Um, I don't think that people that are homeschooled like, you know, can't learn that in other ways. But I think it's easiest for them to do that. Like the parents could obviously take, you know, their child and like make sure that they were interacting with children like every single day outside of their schoolwork. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so um, the question, asshole, was he asking if he was an asshole? Am I the is asshole it, for making my sister cry? Yeah, I mean, it was... Uh, uh, I, I feel mean, like it just like maybe got blown out of proportion. It's It's like, yeah, I mean, you quizzed her to try to make her feel like a dumbass to prove a point so like yeah are you the asshole like i mean slightly but like you also have a very strong conviction about your dis- dismay for homeschooling yeah and so you wanted to change the outcome that is true well an op also like already kind of has a judgment on their sister and the husband Mm -hmm. basically being like, they're not the brightest people. Yeah, right. They're more physically labor people, not math people. Right. So there's already like this thought behind OP, like, no, my sister's dumb. Yeah. But I think you're right. Like if you have the resources, like you can buy homeschooling coursework, like that you just follow along with your kid. Mm -hmm. But there's also the side of this where it's like homeschooling doesn't necessarily just have to be mom or dad, whoever, is staying home, no matter who's staying home with the kid, whatever. It doesn't have to be just them. There's also like these little like, I forget what they call them, but they're like almost like pods of a group of parents that come together 
and they all like trade off homeschooling. So it's a bunch of little kids together being homeschooled. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, well, that's kind of cool. Like they get the social benefits, the safety of not getting shot at school, like things like that. Because that is a big yeah, fear for, for a sure. lot of parents. Yeah. I had, um when I was writing for USA Today, I actually had a USA Today story about a mom that like really wanted to send her kids to school because she didn't feel equipped, but her husband was so scared about mm-hmm. the dangers. Yeah. And so that is a big fear for a lot of parents. I don't say that lightly, but I don't know. I, I think this is just kind of like her crying. I mean, you're entitled to your feelings. Like, yeah, you might be the asshole in this one. It might be a justifiable reaction because you kind of were being mean. And I don't know all the planets. I know Earth, Mars, Uranus, Venus, Neptune, Mercury. Dude, the other night, I I I don't even know how many there are. I literally could not sleep the other night, like I think like three weeks ago. And because I started thinking about the fact that like, I don't don't know if I know long division anymore. Oh, I'll show you. Or like- I was trying to, I was trying to do like basic math, like multiplication. I was like trying to do like 84 times 74. And then I was like putting it in my head and I was just like, okay, four times four, eight. And then I was I I basically was like, I I'm losing it. I think I forgot how to do this. And so it's, we have calculators. Yeah, we Work don't smarter, not harder. We don't use that type of stuff on a regular basis. So I don't think that that point was really driven home by asking those <laughs> questions. No. You know? Um, also like doing division off the top of your head. Like, I don't know. I would need to put it on paper in front of me. Like I can't instantly, like I'm not fucking Alan 16 times from four. 64. No. Oh wait. I said, actually I meant 16 divided by four. <laughs> 33. No, no, no. Three <laughs> 16 points. divided by four. Yeah. So four, eight, 12, three. There's four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i can't homeschool my Don't kids homeschool your kids Morgan. four eight twelve sixteen okay it's four <laughs> we, we all know i'm really bad at math here but you're really smart so like if you wanted to homeschool your child i believe in you i would just hire a math i tutor. really do i would just hope that you would also you know socialize too because it i mean even but someone you know, but i would have figured that out yeah, no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> see, but this is what I yeah. said. I can't see it in my head because when I like think about math and like She's people crying. being, I'm like, <laughs> like laughing, crying. I know. But I always get this like vision of like, I haven't seen Goodwill Hunting, but remember Alan from um, The Hangover uh-huh. and he's like at the card table and he sees all these crazy math symbols floating around his head. Uh-huh. That's what I envision with people that can like do math without paper. I need paper. Yeah. But also like, I'm just dumb. Like <laughs> four, eight, 12, 16. But I can do multiplication of nines really well. Nice. Ask me one of those. Um, I'm a little scared actually. Oh, you know why I know you can do that really well? Because your fingers, huh? No, I don't do that You don't trick. do this thing? Nope. But I learned about that recently. Okay. Nine times nine. 81. Yeah. Nine times seven. 63. Cool. <laughs> that I'm good at. <laughs> you know, you want to know my trick? What? Okay. So anything times the nine, mm-hmm. seven times nine. One less than seven is six. What does it take to get you back to nine? Three. 63. Hmm. I had to do the finger trick. Nine times five. One less than five, four. What gets you back to nine? Five. 45. Pretty slick, huh? No fingers needed. Don't ask me 16 divided by four, though. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Let's go. Let's, Let's go. Let's continue. Uh, next. Two left. I think two. This is going to be good. Rapid fire. Two. 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 Okay. So this next one does contain talks of miscarriage. So feel free to skip if, you know, you feel it applies. It's titled, Am I the Asshole for Just Posting My Wife Miscarried on My Mom's Social Media After She Announced Our Pregnancy? My wife was pregnant with our first child. We weren't telling anyone yet because it was early. My mom was over at our house and noticed some obvious clues of pregnancy. She asked about it, and we were honest. We also asked her to please respect our wishes and not go telling people because it was early in the pregnancy, and we wanted time to ourselves to absorb it. 
The pregnancy was unplanned, but welcome. My mom lasted two weeks before she started posting about becoming a grandmother. We hadn't told her yet we had lost the baby. Mm. I was still feeling dead inside when I saw her post, so I just commented that, quote, Elise miscarried a week ago. I guess it took about an hour for my mom to see the comment and delete her post. We have been getting condolences, which we don't want, and my mom has been getting crapped on by family and friends for being so insensitive. She is mad at me for not telling her that we had lost her grandchild. I think I was an asshole because I replied that I didn't want her blabbing my family's personal life again. She is crying, and my dad says that I have every right to be upset, but that I could have been nicer. I'm just so angry right now. I don't know how to feel. Am I the asshole? What do you think? No. Like, this person's mom completely disrespected them, went went against what they asked. You know, they said, hey, we're not ready to share. We want time to absorb it. Mm -hmm. Waited two weeks and then goes on Facebook. Yeah. Fuck you. This is not your news to share. If that couple has not posted on their own social medias, do you think you have a right to go tell the world? Absolutely not. It's the same with like people like getting told we don't want pictures of our babies shared on social media. Mm -hmm. Please respect that. And then you see people, grandmas, grandpas, aunts, uncles, whoever the fuck it is, posting pictures of those children Mm -hmm. without the parents' consent against the parents' explicit wishes. You know what's... I can compl- I actually agree with everything that you're just saying right now, just to let you know. Um, but Thank you just you. you made me think about something because there was a scenario where I worked with this guy who um he's from where was he from? Alabama. His family was super, super close. And he was saying that his sister or sorry, his brother just had a baby, and that his sister-in-law said the baby is not allowed to be posted anywhere, but yet she made sure the baby was in every single family picture. So it would be like a group of 20 of them and Mm -hmm. she would have the baby in that photo for every single one of the pictures. And so then some of the relatives would post on their Facebook and be like such a fun time gathering with my family. And she freaked out and ripped all of their heads off. And this was also like her, all of her like in-laws too. So it's not even her direct family. And she's like, was freaking out at all of them. And so my coworker was telling me like how pissed that he was because he's just like, if you don't want want your baby posted on social media keep them out of the pictures and we need to do two different takes if you want to do that because we're allowed to post our happy moments with our family and you can't police that so we need to do one with your baby and one without yeah and like that's that or you take it on one person's phone and then if the baby is in the picture but here, I think I think that is a better solution. Let's take two versions. Mm-hmm. So like, hey, grandma and grandpa don't have to learn how to put an emoji on baby's face because a lot of parents do do that. They'll mm-hmm. put the emoji. But if you took it on one person's phone, put the emoji of the baby, you know, covered on the baby in all the pictures, then the baby's not getting seen. But I think at that point, it's like, what's the point? Put the baby in a crib, a bouncer, whatever the mm-hmm. fuck you have for a couple of minutes take two versions because you do want those photos to cherish and have those memories. But again, if you don't want your baby on social media, get two shots. Yes. Super easy. Exactly. That's interesting. It was interesting. I remember how upset he was because he came into work and apparently like she blew up on everybody and like freaked out. And he was so angry because he was just like, we had such an amazing like time, like gathering with our family. And like there was photos of like, all 20 of us. You know and, what? You know, it's like, and now we just have to put those photos and like hide them away. Like, no, 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 no. We are happy about them. We want to share them. Yeah. Like we, you go, you go on this nice little website called Fiverr and you pay someone five or $10 to literally Photoshop the baby out of the pictures. There you go. Happy yeah. memory. I love Fiverr. I've removed people out of my pictures. Hmm. Nice. Very cheap. $10. Whoa. Couldn't even tell. <laughs> who well it wasn't you so don't worry about it (laughs) okay but back to this one I feel like this person is totally justified in their reaction because how can you imagine can you imagine you just lost your baby and you're trying to scroll through Facebook just have a a mental vacation a break distract yourself not think about the loss not be in your living nightmare hell and all of a sudden you see your mom 
posted a pregnancy announcement for yeah. you and you're like in your morning. No, I'd be pissed. I'd be so pissed. It's when you ask somebody not to, like if if that was if that wasn't asked, it's just a pure accident, you yeah. know, and it's whatever. But at the same like at the same time, like you should be able to read the room. Like even with me, like my uh basically sister-in-law, um, she posts her baby all the time. My niece, my my brother's baby too, right? So I even like hesitate before I post her on my social media because like I don't want to ever cross a boundary. Yeah, cross a boundary. Just ask. Like you you have to think about that type of stuff. Like it's not it is a baby who's not consenting and like you do have to go to their parents, right? So it's like it is it is in the most kindest way. I'm sure she was just so excited, but it is disrespectful. Yeah. And like, I think anytime something involves other people and you want to share it or like it obviously involves yourself too. Hey, Lauren, I, I really want to share this moment. I know you're not telling people yet. Mm -hmm. Is it okay? Like, I, I just think like you could have consulted them. One of the comments that I think is interesting is info. How does your wife feel about your comment on the post? So OP says, Let's just say it was better that I posted than I had let her post what she wanted. Yeah, I could see that. So honestly, like the dad being like, you could have been nicer. Really? Because I think you were pretty just objective. Self-explanatory, yeah. Matter of fact. Mm -hmm. I agree. Like, I I think honestly, this is very justified. Mm -hmm. And I think in, in experiences like this, like he's grieving like this is yeah. shitty and if this is how it went down truly and there's not missing information like justified yeah and I also you know I don't I don't like to justify people being not I'm, I'm not saying that OP's like did anything wrong at all but just yeah. in general I don't want to like justify people like being bad because of you know something they're going through but at the same time like when somebody is grieving I do think that you got to give them some slack like truly truly some slack for ways that they speak to you ways that they react like you like that that's to, my personal yeah, opinion like, yeah for sure it's like I don't think OP like did anything wrong in terms of like and when you add on the fact that OP was grieving it's just like yeah yeah. Well, and someone goes, um, I feel not the asshole for how you treated your mom, but maybe you're the asshole if your wife didn't want to be telling people about the miscarriage publicly. Right. And sorry for your loss. But OP covered that. Well, and the problem is like OP does respond and say, I didn't want people calling my wife to congratulate us. Yeah. And the problem is like, unless you corrected it publicly, like the cat's out of the bag. Mm -hmm. Like your mom just made this very public announcement. Yeah. How do you reel it back? All you can do is now because your mom did this to you, all you can do is say, hey, that's not the case anymore. Right. So thanks, mom. And your mom, your mom does deserve the heat she's getting from family and friends. This is a shitty move. Yeah. Don't spoil people's pregnancy announcements. I'm honestly... I don't know what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to be really sneaky because like I can record the podcast. No one's going to see like, look at this. Look at this. Look at this nice block. No one's going to see shit. I think I'm just going to like all of a sudden like post a baby on my feed. Hey, hmm. I'm going to pull a Kylie Jenner. Hmm. I don't know. Weird flex. I think I just want to try it. Yeah. I want to see how long I can get it. away with it. <laughs> you know, people are going to be like, you didn't have a white claw in that episode. Pregnant. So are you going to do this just to like for fun podcast or like to everyone like are you gonna try to like hide it from me for like six months <laughs> i don't know we'll see i'm not there oh my yet God. i'm not there yet well, well i don't know i just think it'd be kind of fun and like to not have the stress of other people knowing and to like really just like soak it in like i get what they were trying to do that's why i think i'm so mad because like you are a new parent it's a first time you want to soak it in no pressure Oh, yeah. I think that that is an that's one thing. That's an absolute standard. You do not have the right to announce anyone else's pregnancy. End of story. Nope. There's just no like, nope. I don't care if it's because you're so excited. I don't care if it's so innocent. It's because you're so full of love and joy. You do not have the right to announce somebody else's pregnancy, period. Yeah. Moving along. Moving along. I just saw this one and I'm like, I know I said I would end it, but this is the last one. 
Unless you want to read about a cat that looks like a scrotum. But otherwise, Ooh. this is the last one. <laughs> yes. So this one is titled, Am I the asshole for going home after my in-laws excluded me from dinner at a restaurant? I, female 26, went on a family trip with my in-laws two weeks ago. Mother-in-law always thought that I am a bit ignorant and backwards, and that's just because I come from a lower-class family compared to hers, and I have no etiquette. After we arrived at the hotel, they arranged to visit a fancy restaurant for dinner. My husband avoided telling me, and I learned it last minute after he had already gotten dressed. I asked where he was going, and he said he and his family were going out to eat, but I wasn't invited because his mom assumed that since I wouldn't be familiar with the food and how to eat it there at the restaurant, then it's better for me to stay in and eat at the hotel. I didn't argue. I just let him go. Then I packed and took the first flight home. He freaked out and called many times. And when he found out that I went home, he blew up and called me ridiculous and irrational to do this. Even said I acted in an ungrateful manner and embarrassed him in front of his family after he literally begged to have me go on the trip. We argued and he started giving me the silent treatment after he came home. Moreover, his family are indirectly criticizing me on Facebook about what I did. Did I overreact? Edit, he didn't even mention what type of food they ordered. Edit number two, the family didn't plan on having me come along, but my husband, like he said, begged them to invite me. This isn't just with me. My brother-in-law's girlfriend wasn't invited as well. Hmm. We have one more edit. Should we just get it out of the way? Yeah. Edit three, they paid for my expenses, so I didn't want to act like I'm being needy slash or something. That's what we got. Hmm. <laughs> I, I think this is justified. Yeah. I mean, I do too. <laughs> like, this is your husband. I think it'd be one thing if it was like a boyfriend, things are early on. I don't know. I think even then I think it would be fucked up because like my family's so inclusive. Yeah. Like, everyone like let's go like that's just my family I don't I guess I don't have an excuse for this I'm trying to like play the devil's advocate over mm -hmm. here and I think it's weird and it's especially weird that they're married and it's like oh he begged he begged for me to go and it's like well if they still said no he shouldn't have gone yeah he should have stood by you this is weird you're justified yeah I would have if I were to be like specifically excluded in my husband's family's anything I wouldn't want to be a part of that family no mm -mm. I'd be furious it's interesting that the brother-in-law's girlfriend is getting excluded too well and that's why okay that's why I'm like kind of like curious what is their dynamic they do they only want to just have like their blood relatives right there and then like they want a moment like that because it's like okay like I guess you know it's fine to have moments where it's just of like you know your childhood upbringing like siblings get together like getaway trip whatever I don't know like, don't invite them but leave yeah, them at home yeah like but that's exactly like that the whole I just don't like any of that I would have been furious I would have been furious you remember my favorite word right what just think what's my favorite word that I love to describe certain relationships <laughs> all I can think about is that one word that you found out was a bad word in, in Canada and so you can't say it anymore goofball <laughs> <laughs> not goofball I don't know. this is giving some weird not healthy relationship with a mom and, and her meant. sons ah. this is a mom that wants to keep tabs on her little boys and she'll come up with any excuse to exclude their partners mm. the girlfriends excluded mm -hmm. what's her excuse does she come from a low class family as well also using that as an excuse I grew up on a farm and played in mud, but I could eat an oyster if I had to. I won't because I just don't look good, but I could. So, yeah. Grab the shell, tip it back, slurp it down. You're no, good. I, I would have been furious. I would have left too. I would have. That's the thing is that like, I would have left completely. Divorce. Yes. <laughs> yeah. like, I love that pause. Yeah. I love that pause. Like it's done. You really just hit it home. Yeah. Top comment on this one. Not the asshole. It's offensive for your husband and his family to exclude you from this dinner. Their reason for doing so is atrocious. 
It's even worse for him not to inform you in advance that he'd be having dinner without you, that your husband doesn't understand why his behavior and his family's behavior is completely unacceptable, just compounds their assholeness. Mm -hmm. That is weird. He did kind of try to like sneak out. Like he's getting ready and like you're all of a sudden you're like, wait, where are you, where are you going? Are you oh, I'm going to dinner. Okay. That's so weird. I'll just eat air. Like, thanks. Oh my God. And they didn't stay at the hotel. Like they like went off campus. The next comment is Big Red Box. What the hell did I just read? The only response should be not the asshole. Your hubby is a massive asshole for not standing up for you for going behind your back to a meal in a group vacation, for being surprised and upset that you left that vacation to go home and is now giving you the silent treatment. That's another layer to this too. The reaction and behavior thus I agree. after. No, that was like triggering to me, hearing that he freaked out that she left. It's this like, is a little, little, uh, a lot of red flags here. Honey, I have never said this to a post as it is just a snapshot of a relationship, but this relationship is toxic. You need to leave and not look back. He is never going to support you or choose you over his family. What the fuck? You are so low class, you can't eat a, at a nice restaurant? What does that even mean? Run, run, yeah. run. Lots of awards. 21K upvotes. Do we have more like responses from OP? No comments from OP. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Oh, it was posted a day ago. Okay. So this one is very fresh. We're going to have to keep our eyes peeled. Busy uh, getting the paperwork in, in order. Yeah. Let's get to this cat. Oh, okay. This We're is, getting the scrotum cat. This is our ending. Okay. Am I the, <laughs> the scrotum cat? <laughs> Isn't that what you said? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Am I the asshole? <laughs> God, I can't stop. It's going to be bad. <laughs> Am I the asshole for telling my aunt her new kitten looked like a scrotum? <laughs> I don't know why I didn't know that's where it was going. My mom and I were visiting my uncle and his family <laughs> yesterday. My aunt just got a baby sphinx cat. It is pink, hairless, and wrinkled. She was going on and on about how beautiful it was. I will be clear. It is a very cute kitten. I, however, think that expensive pets are a waste and that she could have adopted a rescue. Lauren's fostering, if anyone needs a cat. <laughs> when we were having dinner, she was sitting with the kitten in her lap, still going on about it. My uncle was rolling his eyes and my cousins were obviously getting tired of this as well. When she asked me for the 10th time how cute I thought it was, I told her it kind of looked like a scrotum. My uncle laughed so hard he spit food out all <laughs> over the table. My one cousin also laughed, but his little sister kept asking what a scrotum was. Oh, at a home. fair question. I didn't know that until like last year. <laughs> <laughs> at home, that shows you how bad sex education is in the States. At home, my mom told me I was an asshole for using that word at the dinner table. I stand by my comparison. Am I the asshole? Were you trying to be the asshole is the question. I don't think so. I think they were just annoyed. You don't think so? Well, they were annoyed. So they maybe were trying to be the, the asshole. Mm, trying to make her shut up, say something so outrageous yeah, and like, mean to yeah, make her shut right? up. Like, were you trying to, like... Clearly, you aren't happy with the fact that mm, she's excited. Somebody is paying a lot of money for an expensive animal that they could actually adopt because there's so many animals. Yeah. I learned like what was the stat? Like I think I told you this. It was like three hundred and seventy-eight or four hundred and seventy-eight thousand animals in the shelters every single year in the United States are put down for no other reason besides not having a home. Dogs and cats, like. Uh, that wow. stat literally broke my heart for like a week. It just, especially because I am fostering. And like, does that include like animals with behavioral issues that might be tougher to I'm adopt? I'm sure it's all of the above, yeah. but like That's it's still an but absurd it's, number. But it's also, it's, you know, it's, it's also just animals who just genuinely they can't find a home for. Wow. That number is astounding. When you think yeah. about how many animals that is astounding insane and because like you said i've i have been fostering yeah. and there's two places i've fostered so if anyone lives in southern california so the two places that i was fostering was um orange county animal care and then also um best friends la mm -hmm. so 
There's during kitten season too, specifically a lot of the adult cats are at risk because there's There's so so many. many kittens and that's like summertime. So it's just like once be like fostering in general, you get to know like these animals and each of them has a different personality. Like I had a litter of kittens and every single one had a different personality and it's just so beautiful and then so heartbreaking to think about how many animals just don't even get the chance to be seen. So I know um, if anyone, you know, is living in those areas or like is considering helping out or fostering or loves animals, like look into a near foster near you and see how you can help because it it really does save their lives by watching them for a while because the shelters get overcrowded and they can't take care of them. Well, and when you foster the shelters, typically pay for all the expenses related to the animal food yeah litter exactly yeah i actually ended up spending like three hundred (laughs) dollars on fostering i think it was like three or four hundred dollars um that like i didn't necessarily need to but like you know you feel good i did you feel good that's crazy wow so yeah, I get your point. Like there is a little bit of a judgment here already. Yeah, sorry. Back to like the and story. I um, do think like I don't think you should support backyard breeders. Like people buying animals off Craigslist, don't buy p- animals off Craigslist. Like you're supporting backyard breeders. That's only encouraging people that have no fucking idea what they're doing to breed their pets. Don't do it. Go to a shelter or go to a very reputable, responsible breeder. Because I understand wanting to go to a breeder and get a dog that you know where they come from yeah their genetics i adopted a german shepherd he was like a puppy mill rescue Mm -hmm. he was literally a hundred dollars and i'm sorry i love bear but the dude was crazy he bit people Mm -hmm. i got a yorkie she came from a backyard breeder she bites people Mm -hmm. like i got crazy dogs so for me personally i know i don't have the ability to take any chances on a dog that maybe has some screws loose I have enough screws loose for for me (laughs) I don't need you know what I mean like I just can't I can't deal with that again after having so many reactive dogs so I will go to a very ethical responsible breeder Mm -hmm. but again there's German Shepherd rescues out there I'm gonna foster before me and Justin when we get our house and we actually move in we're gonna start fostering seniors yeah and maybe you might Maybe find a match. I'll find a match. And that's how a lot of people do. And that's how I want to do it. Is yeah. when they're fostering. So that's there's fostering helps not only to not overcrowd the shelters, but then sometimes you fall in love and I you, might be a you foster can't fail. say goodbye. Yeah, yeah. So it's it is a really I would encourage it a lot. And that's For why sure. I'm pushing that because I have thought about it like in a lot of the past few episodes I've done of like talking about it on the podcast. Yeah, so. that's a crazy number. Yeah. But um But this lady was excited. And I think you make a really good point of like <laughs> I think what, what was the, your comment intended for? Well, yeah. And so was it helpful or hurtful? When you go back to the point where it's like that animal now is there and that animal does exist. So like if you're going to like being mean to that animal, if that's what you're trying to do, isn't helping like your cause. Right. Like if you want to go out and make a difference, like preach to adopt. But like once the animal is there, that's just as that's yeah, that, that's just as much of an animal and an innocent life as, you know, the ones in the shelter. Like, that animal is there. So it's like, you know, I don't think it's that deep. And I think it is kind of funny. Like, those, I think those animals are so cute, but also so funny looking at the same time. And I, it's not in a bad way. So, like, I don't think that it's, like, that deep. But, like, if you meant it deep, yeah, then it's a different story. I know. It is interesting. Overall, vote was asshole. I'm sitting here Googling. I literally typed in Google scrotum versus sphinx cat. (laughs) I just wanted to see. No scrotums came up. It's only cats. Mm, But like, honestly, they're just like, they just look like kind of raw chickens. You know what I mean? I think they're really cute. I honestly, I could do one. Justin's mom's like (laughs) super allergic to cats, but I love cats. Yeah. So I could get one. I think they're fun. The only thing is apparently um, you really need to lube them up. I was just thinking like when yeah. you pet them because they like to like rub their faces. Yeah. And the fur like allows it to just like glide. But like mm. would their skin just kind of drag? You and- have to lube them. So I've seen a lot of people on. Makes sense why he called them a scrotum. Oh my God. Full yeah. circle. Full circle. Full circle. But a lot of people put like um, coconut oil all over them or like, <laughs> I don't know. What you used to use all the time. I still use it. (laughs) 
It's the best <laughs> lube in the world. And then they'll put them in little sweaters after so the oil doesn't get all over their house. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense why there's sweaters. But I've also seen one lady with her Sphinx cat and maybe all cats get it, but mine didn't. Um, Like in their nails, they get these little like oil buildups and mm. you have to like pluck them out mm. so if you're really into like pimple popping and popping stuff picking stuff don't this don't might say be, this is the cat for you do not say that morgan this might be the cat for you there's a cat for everybody <laughs> oh, no. get your pussy today at a shelter near you oh my god we're done <laughs> cat <laughs> well until next it's time real <laughs> are we seriously ending right there <laughs> i guess okay <laughs> <laughs> Can we do that to people? I think they'd be sad. Okay. We're back. <laughs> I felt weird ending it like that. Yeah, I know. It, it felt like kind of comical though. Can you imagine if it was just like I I'm gonna I am gonna punk them. I'm gonna like put the song and be like, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I don't think a lot of people stay. I'll end it quick. Okay. It'll just be the <laughs> Okay, cool. We, we wouldn't leave you guys like that. We couldn't do that. I thought you wanted to. I was along for the ride. You know, it has been a long episode. But, you know, it was long, which mm -hmm. means we got through a lot of stories. All you people that say, shut up, more stories. Are you proud? A lot of chitter chatter. Are you happy? I think we got through six, seven. I lost count. Still a lot of chitter chatter. But S if we, quality if we stories, get rid of though, that one where we went in circles, then it'll, I think it'll be clean. You know? Well, one is going to go to Patreon. Yeah. All of them were good stories, though. Okay. That one was just so intense. It flustered us a little. Mm -hmm. Still a quality story. Yeah. One of the best, actually. Yeah. You learned a new word. I did. Polycule. Yeah. So there's so that. That's I'll use every single day. And is that the story that I do bad math on? Well, sorry that you had to witness that. No, it wasn't. Fuck. <laughs> now the masses get to see how bad I am. But this is why eventually there will be Mathlete merch. But new merch is coming soon. I don't know when this is coming out, but merch is dropping September sometime. Do I get some? Of course. Yay. It'll be the first. Second. I'm first. Well, I still dream about that like lime sweatshirt. You never got one. No. That I'm so cute. Um, I'll give you one. I have an extra, I think. You do? We'll hook you up. But thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode. That's all I really got. Head over to Patreon. Yeah. Maybe look for a poll on Spotify. Mm -hmm. We'll see. But other than that, until, until next time. time. Bye, Bye, guys.